evening, everyone. I see some familiar faces Hello. here. Hi. <laughs> okay, so once again, uh, welcome, welcome to everybody on It's Your Life, a Tuesday again. And I'm so excited. Every Tuesday, we have someone who is going to speak to you and who's going to give you some amazing tips and some insight that you pr maybe have not heard of it, at least today. Who am I? For those who don't know me, Mona Abdel Rahim Sandl is my name. I am the owner of Mind Your Power and the founder of It's Your Life series. Now we started It's Your Life because of Corona. That's one thing that happened out of Corona. And we started on the 1st of April, uh, uh, basically uh, helping people, let me just pin that here. So yes, helping people get over what is happening outside. Because as I always say, you cannot change what happens outside, but you can very well change what happens inside of you. We have had amazing, amazing speakers so far, as I said, every single one has his own niche, his own area of specialization. And today, I am very, very happy to have a, a niche that we have not spoken about yet in this whole series. Today, we have with us Rana Haraki from Lebanon. And uh, Rana is a, let me see, where shall I start? Rana is a style and mind coach. So she does um, hypnotherapy, she does coaching, she also is a style coach and also style coach instructor. She's also a pranic healer and um, a hypnoparenting coach. And did I forget anything, Rana? <laughs> Theta healer. Theta healer. And mm -hmm. she has also a background in um in in graphic design okay now here before i move on and before we get too much into it uh diana is saying please send me the link to zoom so i can share it uh diana i am sending it right now let me copy this invitation right here and send it to you so okay actually i will send it to everybody who also wants to share it I guess, did everybody get it? I think so. Thank you, Diana, for asking for this link. I'm very, very grateful to you. And um, I wanna take this opportunity to say hello to everybody else. Diana, Elian, Julia, many people that I, that I don't know, some people that I know, Soha, I assume I know, I'm not sure which Soha it is. Uh, people from probably everywhere in the world. Now, back to Rana. Um, do you actually know, you know, we speak a lot of times, we speak about how body language is important, how what we show people is important, not only the words we use, not only what we say, but how we say it and our whole body language. But what about this, our clothes? What about our appearance other than body language? How important is this? How does it affect other people? And how does it affect ourselves? Are you wearing the style that you like or are you not wearing the style that you like? Or who are you or what are you? Or I don't know, so many questions, so many questions. And the answers to all of these questions will come today from Rana. She is the one you want to listen to today. Rana, welcome, welcome to this series now. I'm very, very happy to have you. Thank you for the, for the amazing introduction and it's lovely to see you and everybody who's here. Uh, yes, our appearance is so important. Of course, uh, we know that uh, it matters what's inside the person and everything, but uh, um, uh, we have to say that appearances are so important and they, uh, they affect not just our outer image, the way people see us, but also our self-image, our confidence, our, um, uh, how much uh, we are confident and uh, and they are affected also our, our appearance is also affected by these factors as well so it's a uh, uh, vice versa um, 
So, and, and we can see that a lot in, uh, in first impressions, you know, because people tend to, whether we like it or not, they tend to just uh, um, form assumptions about us from the way we look. And, um, well, maybe this is a, a negative thing, but it's just how we are as humans. And we cannot just overlook that, especially, uh, for example, for job seekers, for people who are looking for a date, uh, their appearances, if uh, they were in a certain way, might, uh, might really affect, uh, might be even detrimental in certain cases on finding a, a specific job or finding the right person. So uh, the thing about style coaching is that we look at the person as a whole, in a holistic way, and we see how, uh, 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 how the appearance and the, the outer image and the inner image can connect in a beautiful way, and the person can express their true self in the way they look and in the way they communicate in everything about this image that the people see and they see in their mind's eye, the self-image. Uh, so, and it's all, always important to just connect these two because at certain times we see that um, uh, uh, some people have moved so farther away from their authentic self and uh, to, to the point uh, that the, we could sense a disintegration in self and then the people will, uh, those people will, uh, will not know themselves anymore and, uh, and will not be living at all happily. Uh, so to go back to the clothes and uh, so our clothes speak volumes about us, whether we know this and whether we like it or not, this is a fact. And they can, uh, they can say lots of things. Um, for example, they can say, uh, I am uh, elegant, I am sophisticated, I am approachable, uh, I am feminine and take pride in my femininity, or I'm masculine and take pride in, mas in my masculinity. Uh, they, uh, they can say, I, I, like, I like to be in the spotlight. They might say, I'm comfortable in, uh, in, uh, in my style, but I'm still stylish. Uh, they can say a lot of positive things, like, uh, for example, I'm a mother, but I'm still my own person. Um, uh, what else they can say? I mean, they can really say, they can say, I'm confident. And, and this is important because um, uh, some clothes, we can wear them and feel empowered and their confidence boosting. But, uh, but uh, on the other hand, some clothes are, are just uh, confidence depleting. And uh, this is just a task for everyone who's listening to this. If you have any clothes in your closet that you feel they just deplete your confidence, that they don't have a feel good factor, I'm sorry to tell you, and I'm happy to tell you, they should be out of this closet because they're not for you. They don't resonate with the person you are, with the true, uh, true person that you would like to see and show to the world. So that's one thing <laughs> to remember. Now, uh, so before you go on, and, and for everybody, maybe if someone else has that uh, question, how do you know the, 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 the uh, clothes that deplete you or not? How, how will you make that decision? How do you know if you feel depleted or sad or down because of the clothes or because of some, something else? Can you give some tips? Okay, so uh, first of all here I'm talking if their confidence depleting, now we're talking about them, between them and themselves. Of course there are clothes that suit them and maybe they don't know it, maybe they know it, uh, and they can be helped by a professional person here. <clears throat> but confidence depleting clothes is clothes when you put them on, you just don't feel good. You find that your posture is not the same anymore. You, you're not standing tall and... Uh, there's something about them that just makes you feel not so good. When you take them out, you feel better. Uh, and uh, that's the thing also to remember when you go shopping. It's important when you put 
clothes on, they might be just perfect, ideal. You saw them on Kim Kardashian, maybe, and you like them. You saw them on whoever, and you know, they're in the, the it's trendy, they're all over Instagram, and you've got to have this skirt or this dress, and then you put it on, and you just feel down. You just don't feel yourself. You just look at your face and you're not like smiling and brimming with energy anymore about it. So that's a telltale for you, no matter how trendy and amazing this is. And maybe everyone will look at it and see that it's amazing even on you. But you don't have this feeling, then just don't buy it, really. Because uh, you're hardly going to wear it in the first place. And if you ever wear it, you're not going to feel yourself. Uh, and this is... This is because we each have a different personality, style personality. Just like we differ in our personalities in life, we, we have different style personalities. And uh, when we wear a style that doesn't resonate with who we are, it just doesn't feel good. Although it might feel good, look great and feel good on our friend, and we like it on them, but then we just when we wear it, it's not the same feeling because we have a different style personality. Of course, and a different body shape and color, season. And, and when we wear something, and that's to answer your question again, when we wear something that's not suitable for our body shape, uh, for, our, uh, uh, for our color season, uh, and for our style personality, again, this depletes our confidence. So we might not be aware that it's the color that's the problem or it's the style that's not suitable for our body or the, 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 the personality, but we get this feeling. We're not, not everybody is an expert in style, but everybody can look inside and get in touch with themselves and get this feeling. If it's not a good feeling, then just take it out. Uh, so yeah, uh, we were talking about what clothes might say about us. Uh, clothes might even say I'm a well-paid professional, you know, I mean, uh, clothes can tell maybe that we value ourselves, you know, we, we, we take care of ourselves and value ourselves. Um, but on the other hand, they can say that we don't value ourselves, maybe. Uh, they might say that we, uh, we don't have a notion of style, maybe. Uh, maybe that we just everybody else matters and we don't care about ourselves. Uh, they might say that um, uh, I'm a mother and of young children and I have given up on my own uh, needs, you know. Uh, they can say I'm one of the boys for, for some ladies. Um, for for others, I'm just I I don't want to put any time or effort into this. I just want comfortable clothes, or I'm stuck in a style rut. I wish I can live the old days. Um, there's a lot of poor messages that our clothes can give. Uh, sometimes some people, and I see that a lot, they want to hide in their clothes, and when I go back with them, it's just it's they're physically hiding and why they do that uh, many times when I get when I ask people what do your clothes say about you and then they start because they haven't thought about it before all of a sudden they start uh, trying to make sense out of it and they uh, they realize uh, I don't know, I just don't choose the bright colors that I love. I choose just two plain colors, but I love the bright colors. Or maybe I just choose just clothes that are too plain. Although I love the other styles, but I don't tend to choose them. And then we start going back, why? And, and then I always ask them to go to the first time this happened. And it's always like, uh, I was 10 years old, I was nine years old, I was 11 years old, I was 30. And what's going on, there's always this, um, 
uh, this incident that happened and they're not aware that it has affected all their lives. They're in their 40s, 50s, 30s, and it has affected them all these years. And here, the, the, how powerful childhood messages can be. Uh, so, um, so some of them might, uh, might have been told that the stress they're laughed at when they were addressed that they were loving, you know, and uh, uh, this dress just uh, doesn't look good on you, and they laugh, and it would have looked better on your on your cousin or sister because she's skinny and you're not. Uh, I have uh, people who have told me they were wearing this beautiful dress and feeling amazing in it, and then uh, their parents had them. Uh, it, your legs are showing too much. They had to be covered and and they had to wear like uh, pants under it and they felt they looked like a clown and they had to go out like this and feeling so uncomfortable. And here is the feeling of hiding. You know, I, I get that a lot in my sessions. Uh, <clears throat> I've had people uh, being criticized for being too tall or too fat or, and um, and this had affected them all these years. Uh, there was one lady who even told me, I just realized I've been hiding all these years and not just with the clothes I'm wearing, but even with the layers of fat I've been putting on. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, um, so for all mothers here, it's so important the the, the the, any advice, any criticism you might have to your children, please just just think about it very well before you say anything to a child because it might just stay with them for, for a long time and, and sometimes forever and change the way they were supposed to be as a, the true self they were born to be. Um, I think somebody is asking something. Uh, what's your advice for a person who wants to look feminine but uh, it, okay, so, she, uh, uh, so someone here is asking, what's my advice for a person who wants to look feminine, but at the same time, her work is very practical. You can, you can wear comfortable clothes and just, they can still have femininity. You know, we, uh, in the style personalities, there's a natural style personality. And these people just need comfort all the time. But sometimes they come together with the romantic. And the romantic is the kind of personality that likes to express her femininity and likes maybe girlish stuff. And so many times they can come together. They will have clothes that are comfortable and practical, but at the same time, they have this little touch that reminds us of their femininity. Maybe it can be just a bow, maybe it can be a flower somewhere, or just a ruffle uh, here and there, you know? something just to remind us of uh, this femininity and uh, and since you're asking i'm sure you're a very feminine person and please please make sure to express this femininity because you will you will feel more yourself when you do uh, even in comfortable and practical clothes uh, so uh, and now we had another question here. Uh, do we wear clothes for us or for others? And also, um, same person is saying, my style is developed from Im imitating people we love, or is it a way we adopt from our parents? So is it from imitating people or from our parents? And do we wear them for us or for other people? Of course, we wear them for us. We definitely want to feel amazing in our clothes, but we still like to hear a compliment here and there. I mean, studies show that compliments have the same effect of a physical reward. So <laughs> they're, they're good for you. They're like your confidence boosters and uh, uh, why not have them every now and then? So yes, the important thing is that you feel amazing in your clothes. But it's all, it also affects when we see others looking at us <clears throat> and admiring how we look. And this will help our self-image as well. So they come together. Uh, how we choose the style. 
uh, make sure to stay till the end because I'm going to do a kind of visualization and this will help answer your question to, to really because let's see uh, the true style that you really authentically like because some people really are not aware are not really know exactly what they like so um, so in the visualization I, I think you might find the image that you would like to portray, the true image. Uh, of course, not by imitating people. We get inspired, definitely. We get inspired from the runways. We get inspired from fashion magazines, from bloggers, uh, from, uh, from the internet. Yes, we get inspired. And, and that's amazing to get inspired because you can always develop your style. But by imitating people, you will not be really having your true style. You're not showing your true identity there. Uh, so, and definitely not your parents. Uh, uh, my mother was a major romantic. And I remember when I was a teenager, I just became so dramatic. I mean, so many teenagers get into a dramatic <laughs> style when they're teenagers and you know with the black all the time and my mother was super colorful and uh, so and we had a major clash there because she wants me to wear color and I don't want to so no it's not our parents because they might have a completely different style personality than us um, Oh, my other advice to you is like you can look around and get inspired just go to Pinterest and save styles that you would like to see yourself in not just styles that you like in general because sometimes you might like things and just you don't like them for you just check which styles really uh, you feel that they are uh, uh, they they just give you this feeling that I would love to see myself there and just save them. And this will help you. It will, it will help you develop your style and our visualization, I hope. <laughs> Uh, thank, you, so, thank you so much, uh, um, Rana. And uh, for everybody, um, I just, uh, you know, Rana had uh, said if you can get a pen and a piece of paper, because uh, she is going to do a short exercise with you. And maybe this will help also understand your style a little bit better. And then she will also take you through a sort of, I don't know, is it like a hypnosis visualization, both a little bit together? Um, so I think a lot of your questions will be answered, but please do uh, prepare a pen and a paper so that you can participate in that exercise. And then I'm sure we can take a lot more questions at the end. When you have uh, experienced that, you can ask Rana again different questions. So um, sometimes even clothes can say myself worth depends on the labels I wear and we see that a lot these days especially with the uh, with the social media and the brand obsession uh, we we see that uh, sometimes and the people are just wearing the brands and not really wearing their own style um, uh, we get uh, we uh, sometimes the clothes can say that I'm uh, uh, I'm, I, I don't want to get old, maybe, or I'm too old, <laughs> you know? So, anyway, um, if you would like now uh, to get your pen and paper, and let's do this exercise together and see what uh, would come up. This will open your eyes, really, to maybe uh, things you haven't thought of before uh because they just happen or maybe in the backs of our minds without really just putting any thought into it so now we're gonna put more thought into it and see what might come up um okay so um uh i guess you've got your paper and pen and uh, i'd like you to ask yourself at this moment what are your current clothes saying about you? It can be a word, two words, three words, maybe a sentence, just anything, anything that comes to your mind. The first thing that comes to your mind, uh, just um, write it there.
And now, think to yourself, what would you ideally like your clothes to say about you? Again, the first thing that comes to your mind, you can write a word, a sentence, three words, paragraph, I don't know, whatever is good for you, just write it there. Now let's divide this. So, so we're talking about the current moment, but uh, I'm sure many of you were it, many of you go out with their friends, with their family, have special occasions. So let's divide this to be more accurate. So what do your clothes say about you at work? And what would you ideally want them to say about you at work? Again, what do uh, your clothes say about you when you're going out with your friends? And what would you ideally want them to say about you when you go out with your friends? When you're out with your family, what would you like them to say about you? And what do they say about you? You can also do this for special occasions as well like weddings, parties, you, you know, what, what do your clothes say about you in these special occasions? And what would you ideally like them to say about you? Finally, what do your clothes say about you at home? And this is important, especially these days with the pandemic and a lot of people were quarantined and are still quarantined. So and are spending more days at home. Um, our clothes are speaking to us in our home and to our family members maybe, or to anybody who's living with us. So uh, what are they saying about us? And what would you ideally want them to say? Uh, we surely all like to be comfortable in our houses and that's very important. But at the same time, comfort doesn't have to mean uh, ragged or shapeless or uh, we can be comfortable and still look and feel good in whatever we're wearing and at home. Uh, so now, uh, um, look at those areas that uh, your clothes are saying not what you ideally would want them to say about you. And ask yourself, why? Why do you think so? Allow yourself to go back to the first time this happened, maybe, uh, maybe this feeling uh, to the first time you felt this feeling or to the first time uh, 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 that you started doing whatever it is. Uh, just go back to this first time. Take a deep breath now and just go back to the first time this happened. What's going on? How old were you? Who taught you this?
Do you still believe it's true? Who says? Is it logical? Has anyone ever proved this differently? What could you believe instead? How does this new belief make you feel? And now take another deep breath. And forgive yourself if you have to, if you have been holding on for, uh, for something that's not serving you for a while. And forgive anyone who might be involved in this. Forgive them for, for your sake, not for their sake, just to be liberated from any negativity that you might be feeling that they might have caused. And now again, take a deep breath in. And make sure to close your eyes and look inside you. Connect with yourself, with this authentic self, the true person you were born to be. Allow yourself to connect with this person. This person that has no limits no boundaries, no fears, no insecurities. Connect with this person. And let them show you the image that resonates with who you are. Listen to them as they tell you how this image is. What's the image that you'd like to project to the world? What's this image that you'd like to see when you look in the mirror? Now you can imagine a full length mirror in front of you. It can be, just take your time to, to see how it looks. Maybe it has a frame, maybe it's frameless, maybe it's wooden, maybe it's metal. Just anything you see is right for you now. And look in this mirror and see that image, the true image that expresses who you really are. See the clothes that you are wearing. Touch them and feel the sensation of these clothes. Run your, your hands through your hair and feel how it feels like. See the style in the mirror. Vividly see this picture very vivid, clear and bright. And just turn sideways 
into the back and see yourself from all the corners. Feel the feelings that this image is giving you. Notice how you're standing. Notice your posture. Notice your face, your expressions. And make this image even brighter and bigger and more vivid. And now let yourself invite your friends over, your close, close, your close circle, your family members to join you and see this, this look of yours. And hear what they're saying. See their expressions and how they're looking at you. See how your skin is just clearer and shining and bright and your eyes are sparkling. And hear what they are saying to you. And make this picture even bigger and brighter and just feel it, see it, and listen to everything involved there. This is who you truly are. This is the person you were born to be. And capture this picture and keep it in your mind. And now, enjoy these feelings, enjoy this image. And just imagine there's this perfume that was just meant for you, specifically for you. It's the exact perfume that just feels good for you. And put some of it on. Smell it. And notice what feelings it gives you. And again, notice your posture, your gestures. Enjoy this image and those feelings and make it so close that you can even touch it. And now you can count to five and whenever you're ready, just open your eyes. making sure this image is still there and saved in your mind <laughs> for whenever you need to go shopping, for whenever you want to open your closet, this image is there. And you know exactly how you want to look and how your true self would like you to appear without any uh, limitations there without any uh, outer effects there from maybe any messages uh, childhood or adulthood or media and I hope this feels good and I hope the next time you get dressed, you remember this image very well and you see it and you choose accordingly.
Uh, I'm gonna check some of the questions here. <laughs> yes, you can go to your closet finally now, uh, for sure. And just check the colors against your face also. Are they just making your, your face brighter or just taking away uh, from your face? And again, your body shape, your style personality, uh, uh, I'm dependent uh, and imitating bloggers. How is it dangerous? Uh, it's not dangerous. There's nothing dangerous about uh, uh, imitating, but getting inspired is better for you. So you can just dress the way you uh, that feels good to you, the way that uh, is, is uh, more like the person you are, not like another person. I hope this... Uh, uh, this visualization helped you here. Uh, do uh, I? Uh, sorry, yeah, it, it, I think it was great. Uh, wonderful visualization. And uh, just a question here, because I figured that probably a lot of times this is where the problem lies. The problem is mainly because people probably don't even know what style they want. Is that true or is that your experience? Lana, now I know that you work a lot with people who come to you for co-style coaching, right? People who really don't know this. So you do give them the exercise and um, is that the main reason why people don't feel comfortable because they don't even know themselves? They, they don't even know and because they're, they're buying clothes for different reasons and so many times it's not, uh, it's not for themselves maybe, it's not for what they really want, it's because uh, maybe it's too practical, it's the easy choice, maybe it just, uh, uh, it's my friend, she wears these things and they look good on her. Uh, because they're trendy now and as we know like on the runways we see hideous clothes sometimes we see hideous trends sometimes and uh, serious of course we see a lot of nice things and amazing things but there's a lot of hideous trends and that honestly I believe nobody should follow <laughs> you know and there are really there are trends that nobody should ever follow because they just uh, they make people look look awful they make the best bodies look just awful and we should stay away from these and i always talk about the uh, i call them the tent jeans and they are trendy now please stay away from them <laughs> these are the jeans that are just uh, there's the fabric is stiff and they're just uh, too wide and too short and they will make anybody look shorter and fuller so unless this is what you want to achieve don't wear them, you know? The only people who want to look fuller and shorter can wear these, uh, truly. And we see them being worn with those like very chunky sneakers and this just adds to that. It adds to, the, uh, to making the person look completely unfeminine uh, and uh, shorter and fuller again. So, <clears throat> It's a big no. So, uh, so some people just, they don't know and they follow trends, exactly as you were saying, they don't know. So they either follow trends or fall into the trap of choosing something that's too basic because it's a safe choice or uh, uncolorful uh, or just whatever my friend, she looks good in these clothes, I'll buy whatever she, she buys, you know. Uh, or childhood messages or just messages from the spouse or ex-boyfriend, <laughs> you know, that are stuck there and still affecting the, us, you know, and we get that a lot, not just from childhood, from significant others, they affect us so many times. So, and here again, are you, are you wearing these for you or to impress somebody else? So the first person you should always impress is yourself. Um, and some people just wear certain clothes to impress or to just uh, to please a partner, to please a mother, to please a father. And again, these are not the right clothes for them. So there's so many reasons why people might choose to wear things that are don't actually what they really want to wear deep inside. Uh, this exercise will help them. They can just do it again and again. Um, and uh, and even uh, when 
something changes in life, maybe you get pregnant, maybe you get married, uh, again, you can do this exercise again, what do your clothes say about you, and see as you change, how are things changing, because we do change as human beings. The messages we want our clothes, our image to show change also, uh, and I have experienced this, uh, honestly, uh, I have I, I'm a creative person and the way I dress, but uh, the more I'm, uh, uh, when I became a style coach and again into therapy and healing, I just uh, felt I just eased down the creativity a bit because it just wasn't resonating too much with, uh, with who I am at this moment. Uh, again, when I became a mother, my, my style also changed a bit. It was still, uh, uh, resonating with me and not with the fact that I just have kids and I don't have time for myself no I was still having the time to take care of myself but again the messages I want to give were a bit different so always just connect uh, with yourself and see what messages you want to give and please do that let your clothes say exactly what you want them to say about you and it, you will truly look better feel better and everybody will see that as well these are very very valuable tips Rana. thank you so much uh, really i think that uh, this connecting with yourself and really being true to yourself is such a crucial part that um, not many people do. So thank you so much for all these tips. Um, now we did have a few comments uh, on the exercises and I would like to invite everybody else, if you have a comment, uh, please tell us how did you feel after this exercise? Did you have a big aha moment? Uh, I did. Uh, Eliane is saying, thank you, Rana, that was great. I, f I just felt uh, by looking at the mirror, ready to go out now. So yay, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so anyone else who has either questions or comments, please do ask now because this is your chance. Uh, when I'm uh, down, I go shopping and most of the uh, time I buy things not useful just to spend money. Yes, so it's compulsive shopping and uh, I actually uh, give them, uh, are you a shopaholic? Uh, when I get people like that, I give them, are, are you a shopaholic? Uh, questionnaire and uh, so many times uh, uh, I get yes I, I get a big yes of a shopaholic usually being a shopaholic or just uh, uh, impulse buying is connected to something unrelated to shopping at all we just tend to just link them together and um, uh, just like uh, some people uh, find comfort in food because they have linked it at a certain time in their life, linked pleasure with food or reward with food. So many people have linked uh, uh, shopping as a reward for uh, or or just as a feel good factor. And uh, this is this definitely should be changed because uh, it's not helpful at all. Um, Again, it's good to just go back to the first time this happened and, uh, and just uh, think to yourself, uh, ask yourself questions uh, like, uh, uh, is this logical? Uh, uh, is this serving me? Uh, how, can I help? I, how can I change that? Um, and, and, uh, and it becomes a habit. So it starts as, a, as just a comfort thing and then it becomes a habit. And as we know, the more uh, we do this habit, the stronger it becomes in our mind. So we just need to unlink <laughs> this, um, uh, this thing. And I've seen sometimes people who, uh, when, uh, when, when they were just uh, facing, uh, facing uh, uneasy times, uh, they tend to do that. It's not just when they're feeling down today. Maybe they're going in a transition period and this is where it develops. You know, maybe somebody is getting married. You know, I've seen that uh, with some people that it was just uh, a change in their life. There was a change happening and it, they were worried about this. There was stress there and that's when it started this habit. So just like all habits, you can definitely stop it. 
Um, and of course, if you need guidance, uh, you have uh, Mona here to help you with that as well. Um, and of course, I would like to also say you always can reach Rana. So just for the ones who are regulars with us, you know that you will get the replay if you are subscribed to the It's Your Life series, you will get the replay tomorrow by email. If not, you just can join or search for Mind Your Power channel on YouTube and the replay will be on there. You can also go to my website, which is mindyourpower.org. It's your life, all speakers, and there you can see it, Anna, starting tomorrow night, probably. And you can also have a look at all other replays of all amazing speakers that have started from the 1st of April until now. As I said earlier, we had speakers talk about whether it was anxiety or we had laughter yoga, we had yoga, we had homeopathy, we had a lot of good, 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 very, very, very good tips for anyone who was struggling to cope during this time. Now, this is the very first time that we had a style coach and these yeah. kind of tips. But you can all also, uh, when you watch the replay, when you go onto my website, you will have all the contact details of Rana so you can get in touch with her. You will have her email address, her website, and also her Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Rana is available, of course, to do also online sessions. Um, she has done also, if you go to her website, amazing, um, what was it? A, a, was it a TV series, Rana, that you did? Uh, it was an online series that uh, we were doing life makeovers for uh, people who needed just, not just a makeover with the way they looked, with, uh, with their whole self, you know, they were going through tough times. Uh, the people we chose were really in dire need of help in, in many way, in all aspects. Uh, and this is why we chose them. Uh, we were able to help them uh, make over their look and their mind, maybe deal with the past. And uh, we also made some of their wishes come true. So yeah, this was uh, makeovers with a cause. Yes, and, and very, really, I love that fact that you said at the beginning you work holistically, so you do include the mind also. You do, you know, like we just saw a little bit, you do hypnotherapy with, combined with uh, the, your style coaching. So you, you're sure to get not only the style, not only the body, but also the mind in balance, yes? Exactly. And what? this the concept also of style coaching, because we believe uh, in style coaching, we believe that uh, no matter how much you just uh, uh, beautify the outer look, if the person is not really uh, happy with uh, who they are and uh, the image they're showing, they will never be content with whatever change they have done. Uh, and another thing we do <coughs> in style coaching, we use the outer appearance as a starting point. Um, and uh, because working on the outer appearance is just easier. When we do that, uh, the mind becomes more flexible for change. Uh, so we use it as a starting point and the change starts happening. And we also believe that uh, for people who have, you know, are, are just um, having trouble with their confidence maybe or low confidence levels, uh, we, we help them adopt the attitude of a confident person, the posture of a confident person, and the voice of a confident person. And that alone will help them become confident. We do it the other way around <laughs> sometimes, and it really proves to be uh, very helpful. And this is a tip for everyone here, just a boost of confidence. Just adopt, look at confident people, think of them now. If you, you can think of them and you can picture how they, they are, and you can do it uh, whenever you need this boost of confidence. Wonderful tip, wonderful tip. Thank you so much, Rana. Uh, Thank you so much for having me, Mona. It was a pleasure yeah. having you. Uh, really, really interesting talk. Um, Thank you for everyone else who was on the call. As I said yeah. earlier, please do uh, visit the website for more amazing speakers, mindyourpower.org, It's Your Life, All Speakers. 
and uh, just just watch every single one. Um, if you want to get in touch with Rana, as I said, you will have all the details, all her contact details on there. And uh, well, all I can say now is thank you so, so much, Rana, again, for, you. for being thank here you with much. us. We're for happy. all the others, uh, just a small request. If you would like to speak on our Tuesday It's Your Life series, then please send me an email at mona, M-O-N-A, at mindyourpower.org. I will be very, very happy to host you. Whatever you have, as long as it's a positive story to share, to help the world, to, you know, sometimes there are small, small tips that we think well, everybody knows them. And then we find out nobody really knows them. Or maybe people know them, but they need to be reminded sometimes. So if you have something positive to say, to share, please send me an email and I will be very happy to host you one of these Tuesdays. For now, I love and leave you all. Again, Rana, goodbye. And goodbye to all of you To I see Dubai. I see we have Lebanon. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your comments here. Thank you, Rola. Thank you, uh, Amal. Reach out. Uh, thank you, Elian. Thank you, Flavia. Thank you, Diana, and everybody who wrote comments. Um, there was one question. I just saw we oversaw a question. Rana, can you still answer one question? Yes, yeah, sure. Julia, I'm very sorry we oversaw you. Do you recommend organizing closet by color or outfits? Ah, okay. So, uh, you know, that's a personal choice. I have people who prefer to have them by, uh, uh, by outfits and we do capsules sometimes. Capsule wardrobe is when you uh, create different outfits from just a few things that you have and you create many outfits out of it. Um, so you can do by outfit, you can do by item, you can do by color. It just depends on what suits you best. What I do when I work with clients, I create outfits for them and I have them take a picture because we can't always uh, have them in uh, 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 hanged as outfits because one item will be with another item again as a capsule. So when they take pictures, it makes it e easier for them. And you can do that yourselves. You know, when you declutter your wardrobe, just make uh, combinations and take pictures of them save them in your camera whenever you have an outing just look in your phone and it's there you don't have to waste time uh, some people choose to do them by item and color and length uh, and that's a lot of work you know but if you're up to that i have a client who does that he, she she likes them this way I'm not a client a student <laughs> a style coach student who does that and this is how she likes them uh, but I warned her with her clients not to be that uh, <laughs> that too much systematic because they cannot maintain that. Personally, as a personal choice, I do with item and I prefer to have them with length, you know. So skirts alone from the shortest to the longest, pants alone, dresses alone. This is how I do it. But I always ask my clients what's their preference. It's just a personal preference. <laughs> Thank you again. Now I think we got all the questions. So thank you again to everybody and good night. Love and leave you all. Thank you so much, Vena. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.